We begin today's shiur, six lines from the top of Daf Samach Ches. The Gemara opens with a quote from the Mishnah, Uben Teisha Shonim V'yoyim Echod Poislim V'lo Machilin. The Mishnah had discussed, and we saw this at the end of our previous shiur, a number of situations where a woman will either be rendered unfit for uh, eating of truma or a situation where the woman will not be enabled to start eating truma. So without getting into all the details, that of course was the discussion at the end of our previous year regarding the first several examples. Now we, fo- we focus on the uh, the example of the Mishnah of Ben Teisha Shonim V'yom Echad. So what is that? The Gemara continues. Ka Salka Daitoch B'Shoimeres Yavam Leven Teisha V'yom Echad. The thinking right now is that we're talking about a woman whose husband died leaving no children, but he had a surviving brother who is nine years old and a day, and she did not have any relations, any intimacy with him. So, if that be the case, the Gemara wants to know, Lemai, what uh, ramification does this have? If you're talking about a woman who is a Bas Koyen, she's the daughter of a Koyen, and because she is waiting for this uh, Yavam, who's nine years old and a day, she would be re- rendered unfit for truma of her father's house. A woman in general who is a Bas Kohen and her husband either divorces her or dies, she would go back to her father's house and continue or resume the eating of truma. But in the case that she's waiting for a Yavam, who is nine years old in a day, so maybe that is what the Mishnah wants to teach us, that she would be rendered psula, mifsal psula, unfit for eating truma from her father's house. Well, if that were the case, katon nami mifsal posil, even if he was less than that of age. Now, you might be asking, well, a nine-year-old is also a katon. There's a difference, tech, a technical difference, a child, a male, that's nine years old in a day, the intimacy that he conducts has a halachic significance. Less than nine years old in a day, the intimacy that this male child would engage in lacks legal, it lacks any legal status. So, if the issue is uh, a woman waiting for a yavam who is nine years old and a day, well, they could have told me even a bigger chiddish, if, even if the child was less than that age, she would not be able, she's, not, she's considered bound to the Yavam, even though he's so young, and he, uh, uh, she would not be able to go back to her father's house to resume uh, truma consumption. Now, if what the mission is trying to teach me about a Ben Teish Hashan of Yom Echad, that he is, uh, we'll say, the issue of enabling her to eat, and in other words, and, and the point here is, is that he does not enable her to eat. That is the ben teish shon of yom echad. The and that would be a case of a bas yisrael that is uh, waiting to do yibum with a koyin. And the mission is telling me that a ben teish shon of yom echad is not ma'achil. Well, Godol Nami Loi Ma'achil. A an adult, a full fledged adult Yavam does not enable a uh, who, who happens to be a Kohen who uh, of course is a Kohen he's entitled to eat Truma, but he does not enable her to eat Truma. So that why would the mission of uh, focus on a on a case which has less chidush uh, uh, to it when even a gadol, a full-fledged adult who's capable of intimacy in the fullest sense of the word but in a shomeris yavam situation where she's waiting for the yavam he does not entitle her to eat so what 
is the point of the Mishnah when it features the Yavam who's a Ben Teshishon of Yom Echad. As we go on in the Gemara, you'll notice we have diamonds. And on the side of the Gemara, we have a Nosei Mivneh heading, a topic heading with a structural note. Hezbeirin, these represent explanations. Laha de Kotoni Mishnah to explain the Mishnah statement that Ben Teshishonim Viyom Echad, what is the Mishnah driving at? What is the point in mentioning this in the list of those that are Poislin Veloi Ma'achilin? Another marking appears, a volcano shape or trapezoid. And if you skim down the page, you'll notice one of them highlights the word biyavam, and the next word highlights the word psulim. These are uh, markings that are, we call them a simuna marking, will have lit to highlight, I have dale, the distinction, bain piwusham shel abaye verova. Abaye is the first one to explain the Mishnah and then Rava and you'll notice that the these uh, shapes highlight the main point of difference. So Omar Abaye. Hacha and note by the way this is a we have a long marking here. Hacha Biyavam Ben Teshishanam Vyomecha where the uh, emphasis here is on the Ain Ma'achilin. The Yavam who is nine years old in the day does not enable the Yavama to partake of Truma. And we're talking about a Ben Teshishan Vyamech and Habo Al Yavimta. We've dashed under the line Habo means he, there was intimacy. This is in distinction to what we were thinking before when we introduced the issue. Here this is a change. The Yavam had intimacy. The nine-year-old and a day had intimacy with the uh, widow of his deceased brother. Uh, we're talking askinan. We're talking about that. The midoraisa kanyo on a Torah level, there is acquisition. In other words, kanyo the bond is formed. The marriage is established. This yibul marriage is established on a Torah level. Now, when a in general, when a uh, male adult marries a male adult kohen marries a, f- a woman so he, enab- he enables her even if she's not from a kohen family he enables her to eat truma here we have a bond that's formed on a Torah level and yet the, the mission is telling us according to Abai that the Yovam Ben Tesha is not going to enable her even though he's a kohen it does, he does not enable her the woman, the widow to partake of truma Salka Daitoch Amina. I would have thought without the Mishnah. Since on a Torah level there is a bond, there is, a, there is acquisition, there is a, a consummation of the marriage. And that is a function of his intimacy having a significant legal status. Amo, I would have thought, Loichil. Loichil comes from the word Achil or Ochal that he would enable her to eat. Komash Malon, the Mishnah reveals to us that Asu Bias Ben Teshishon and Vyomechod Kemaimer Begodol that the halachic status, and this is a rabbinic intervention, that the Rabbonin say that the intimacy conducted by a nine-year-old uh, male has the status of Mimer. Mimer is where a Yavam gives money to the Yavama, which has only s- significance on a rabbinic level, on a Torah level, it has no significance. There's a Rashi across from here, Habo al the Ilu Godol, if it was an adult Yavam, have a Achli he would have enabled her to eat. Vashminan Rabusa. And the Mishnah reveals to us a new point. The Afagav, the Biyasa Biya, even though his intimacy is considered uh, having a legal status of intimacy, Loi Machil. He does not enable her to eat from Truma. Upoislam Dikotani, if you have the Mishnah readily available at the bottom lower part of Samach Zayin Omid Aleph, Samach Zayin Omid Beis, so the Mishnah used the term uh, uh, right after this phrase. It said in the Mishnah, "Bentei Shishan Yachad Poislim Velo Machilin." That word "Poislim" 
in, that's in the Mishnah de Kotoni Bamasnis Bamasnis and Ah Sha'ora Koi. It's going on the other examples that preceded the Ben Nation of Yemechad, namely Aubar, Viavam, Belobia, the Erusin, the Cherish. Avo Ben Teisha, Lonokat Le Elo, Mishum, the Ain Machilin. The point of teaching Ben Teisha Mechad was to tell me that even though his Bia, his intimacy, is considered of significance, on a rabbinic level, he does not enable her to eat from Truma. We continue in the Gemara. Omar le Rava. So Rava attacks Abaye's explanation. Ihachi, Seifa de Kotoni, in the Seifa of our Mishnah, it said, Sofek Bentesh Shana Vyomechod, Sofek She'eno. Hashta, once you say this Pshad, Hashta Vadai Bentesha Lo Machil, Sofek Mibaya. The Seifa at this point in the, is understood as telling me that if there's a child who you don't know for sure if he's nine years old in a day, that he is not Ma'achil. Well, if, if you're telling me now that a child who is definitely nine years old in a day, when you talk about a Sofek Ben Teisha you're telling me maybe he's not even nine years old in a day. And the Mishnah would seem to be telling me in the Seifa that he's not Ma'achil. Well, if you're going to use Abaye's pshat, you're basically saying even if he's a known nine years old in a day, he's even older than what the Suffolk would have indicated. He's definitely nine years old in a day. That he is not machil. So we'll read that line again in the Gemara. Hashda vanei ben teisha lo machil Suffolk mimaya. Once you tell me that a definite nine year old in a day is not machil betruma, certainly the Suffolk won't be able to. So, as far as Rava is concerned, there's a problem with Rabbi's Pshat because the, the Seifa is, is hard to understand. Elo Omar Rava. Beven Teishishan of Yemechod. The Hanach Psulim Katoni. The Pasli Bibiosan. The case of Ben Teishishan of Yemechod has nothing to do with a, with a, with a uh, Yovam. It's rather a child who's nine years old in a day who is one of the Psulim that are taught in the Mishnah. Rashi says Psulim, Kagon, Mamzer, Vinosin. We uh, uh, those are cases maybe we sh- will just be a little more accurate. They're not taught specifically in our Mishnah, but these are people that are unfit for a woman to marry. A Mamzer a Nosin, Nosin is a from a nation of people that, whose conversion wasn't really an acceptable conversion. When Mishum Poislim, Rashi continues, Mishum Poislim Nokat Lay, the Mishnah had spoken about different ex- de- examples of the Ubar and the Ovam at the beginning of the Mishnah, and also mentioned Bente Shem these are Poislim. It's taught for that. The Lo Machilin, the the Hemshech, the continuation of the Mishnah that said, Lo Machilin, that phrase, Lo Aben Teisha Koi, it's not going on the nine year old. Elo Ashara, it's going on the other cases, the Ubar, the Yavam, the Erusin, and the Cherish. In those cases, we say they're not Machilin. We continue, we turn back to the Gemara. So Rava tells us that the Mishnah's citation of Ben Teshe Shem as being as being um, well being poislim, this it, it deals with nine year old mamzers and nisinim. The Gemara continues. Uh, we read the Hanach Psulim Kotoni the Pasli Bibiosan as a result of intimacy with these kind of people the woman is rendered unfit and as we said it's taught in the Mishnah this line of Uben Teishishan Vimechel is taught because of their Poislin characteristic of course they're not going to be Ma'achil but that's not what the Mishnah's agenda is at this point Uchidisanya Ben Teishishan of Yomechad Ger Amoni Umoavi Mitzri Vedomi Kusi Nosin Cholalu Mamzer These are a list of people that are all problematic. They cannot marry into the rank and file of the Jewish people. So Shebo Oal Chehenes Levi of Israelis Postua If any of these people the, that are even nine years old in a day that had intimacy with a 
uh, a Jewess that has a pure background, so they render her unfit. Rashi says Poslua in Bas Kayin, if she's a Kayin's daughter, what, what do we mean Poslua? It means Minha Truma. She can't eat any more from the Truma of her father's house. And if she's a Levi of Israelis, they would un- render her unfit, the Levi or the Israelis, to marry a Kohen at some time in the future. Question. The continuation of the mission of found in the Samach Tesalmet Aleph. It says, "Im einon ruuyin lovol bai be Yisrael harei elu poislin." If they're not fit to marry into the Jewish people, so they render the woman that they are with the Jewish woman. They render her unfit. The uh, Gemara continues. With a with a spelling out the question Michlal, from this it would seem de reisha lav b'psulim askinon. If the seifa features the psulim, so the reisha then was talking about something else. The Gemara says no. The reisha is in fact talking about psulim. Simply reisha psule kohol seifa. Psule Kahuna. The Raisha, namely our Mishnah, is referring to people that are puzzled to marry any Jew. And as we saw before, uh, like a, a, a Mamzer, a Nosin, the Seifa that says, uh, if, if that Roy Lofo be Israel, the word be Israel is a little tricky. Be Israel means really the Kahuna. And Rashi makes a point of this. If they're not fit to marry into the Kahuna, so their intimacy, a person who fits into that category as being unfit to marry into the kahuna, so their intimacy would uh, would result in poislim. When we make reference to psule kahuna, so that refers to people that a man, for example, that's a cholo, that he is a person whose father was a kohen who married a divorcee. He, the son, is called a cholo, and he's unfit to marry into the kuna. So if he has relations uh, and with a with Jewish, with a, uh, a, a regular kosher woman, he will uh, render her unfit. And if she, if she was a a bas kohen, he'll render her unfit to participate, to partake of truma. And Rashi spells this out: Seifa psule kuna cholol. The afagav the katoni sheinon ruin lovo be Yisrael. And our cholol is in fact yes roi lovo be Yisrael. He is fit to marry a regular uh, a woman from the Jewish rank and file. But nevertheless, the Mishnah that says that, that even though th- those are that are not roi lovo be Yisrael, lo mayri elo be kahuna. It's really talking about the realm of kahanim. The may Reisha have a mina psule kol who from the Reisha I would think that we're talking about people unfit to marry into the Jewish people the pasli avo bias cholo but I wouldn't have known that the intimacy with a cholo would render her unfit lo chitani seifa mishni yaseira lashmina cholo therefore the Mishnah teaches me what otherwise would appear to be a redundancy but it's to bring out this point that psule kahuna men who are unfit uh, as far as they're being considered kahanim, as we said before they're a cholol their intimacy with a woman will render her unfit Gufa here the Gemara quotes that which was mentioned uh, before in passing and now we focus on it Ben Teisha Shonim V'yoyim Echad a boy that is nine years and a day Ger Amoni Umo'avi Mitzri Domi Kusi Nosin Cholol Umamzer these are a list of different people that are not to marry into the Jewish uh, among to marry a Jew Shebol al Kohenes Levi of Yisraelis. If any of these, a convert from Ammon or Moab, from um, Egypt, from Edom, a Kusi and Nosin, these are people whose conversion to Judaism is uh, held in in question. A Cholol and Mamzer, 
a cholo we should point out is someone that is allowed to marry into the Jewish people but he's not uh, if he marries a woman uh, he will he will let's say affect her Kohen truma status and a mamzer mamzer is a person also who though he is Jewish but he cannot marry into the rank and file Jewish people if any of these shebo that intimacy al kohenis levi of Israelis that have intimacy with a uh, Kohenis is a woman who comes from a house of Kohanim or a Levia Yisraelis so these are women that are have uh, pure uh, Jewish background Posluha they have rendered her unfit there's Rashi explains in greater detail Posluha we have a little star uh, at the Rashi that we're looking at uh, about uh, eight nine lines up from the bottom Poslu Kohenis Mitruma de Beinosha Umin Hakuna. If she's a woman that comes from a house of Kohanim, so it, their intimacy will render her unfit to partake of Truma from her father's house, and they will render her unfit to marry a Kohen. Levi of Israelis Min Hakuna. With regard to Levi Israelis that don't eat Truma anyway, they are, however, rendered unfit to marry a Kohen by as a result of the intimacy with the these uh, aforementioned individuals. The source continues, Rabbiosi Omer. Now what we're gonna have is Rabbiosi and he's followed by Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel. They say comments that appear maybe a bit cryptic. Nevertheless, the Gemara will deal with them, will analyze them later on. So, we'll just translate and wait for the Gemara to deal with it uh, on Daf Samach Tes. Rabbi Yossi Oimer, Kol Shezaro Posel Posel. Anyone whose offspring are unfit, so they will render a woman unfit. Kol she'en zaro posul, anyone whose children are not unfit, eno posul, so their intimacy will not render the woman unfit. Reb Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, kol she'ata noise bito, ata noise amenosoi. If you can marry this individual's daughter, that then a then marriage to his almona will not render uh, then uh, then his his almona is fit is fit to marry the kahuna. Call sheinata noise bito if you cannot mar- marry the individual's daughter. So then iata noise almona. So then uh, uh, you would not be allowed to marry his almona. Again, that is uh, uh, cryptic. And we'll wait, Mirza Shem, for the Gemara to elaborate on that. Now, we have on the side a topic heading, a no say, and we also indicate that this goes till Daf Samach Teslam Aleph. Makoros de Bias Posul Posel. These are sources that intimacy with someone who was unfit can render the woman with whom he had the intimacy un- unfit. And when we speak about unfit, we're talking about Lachilas Truma. Uh, for a Bas Kohen, a Levia, and Yisraelis. We also will speak about Linose Le Kahuna, to marry into the Kahuna for a Bas Kohen, a Levia of Yisraelis. As we go through the Gemara, we'll notice a, a, the Mivneh, um, the structural note, features the house marking, which will be appearing in two an alternating directions indicating a ma'akav and a keep, an attempt to keep track of a give and take type structure the house with the uh, point facing up the, the, that will represent uh, responses the inverted house will represent a question so the Gemara after asking Minohani Mili from where do we know that Bias Posul is Posel from where do we know that? So the Gemara answers. Amrav Yud Amrav Amar Krop Ubas Kohen Kisia Leish Zor, and the pasuk goes on to say, "We wrote this between the lines." He betrumas Hakadoshim Lo Sochel. The pasuk says that a the daughter of a Kohen, when she marries an Ish Zar, so she cannot partake of Trumas Hakadoshim. Kevan Shinivala Le Posul La Posla. Once she has relations 
with someone who is unfit, so she becomes unfit. The Gemara asks, Hi, Meboyale, this Pasuk is needed for something else. The Ka'omar Rahmana, it's telling us Bas Kain the Mitzvah Lazar Lo Sechul. A Bas Kohen, a daughter of, of a Kohen, who as such was accustomed to eating Truma of her father's house, when she marries a Zar, in this case Zar means a non Kohen, she stops eating. So the the Pasuk isn't describing the woman herself becoming unfit, but rather it's describing the halacha that a girl who was used to eating truma from her father's house, when she marries a non Kohen, she stops eating the truma, but nothing to do with her becoming unfit. The Gemara responds, Hahi mi vishava el beisovia kinurea mi lechem ovia tochel nafka. The point of a girl having married a non coin, a czar, stopping truma eating is learned from this other pasuk, Vishavel Beisovia. And the Gemara explains the Hezber, from the fact that the pasuk says that she goes back to her father's house to continue to resume eating truma, Michlal de Meikora Lo Achla. That shows us that when she was not in her father's house, when she was married to a non Kohen, that she was not eating. We should simply point out that this other Posuk uh, begins with the words Ubas Kohen. We have this on the side of the Gemara, you can see. Ubas Kohen Kisial Mona Ugrusha Vizera Eila, a daughter of a Kohen when she becomes a widow or is divorced and she has no children from that husband. Then Vishavel Beisovia Kinuram Lechamavia Tochaz, and she goes back to her father's house to eat from the Truma. So we see that when she was married to a non Kohen, she was not eating. The Gemara uh, asks, "E mehahi, if I'm going to be relying on the Vashava pasuk, have amina, I would have thought lav habo michlal ase equals ase. The pasuk there is stated in the positive. She shall go back to her father's house, and and we concluded from that that when she's not in her father's house, namely she's married to a czar, so she doesn't eat. That's called a lav, a negative." that is inferred from a positive. That has a positive status. That It's considered a, an assay. Therefore, kosav rachmona hai lelav. So I need our original pasuk, pasuk yud beis, of ubas kohen kisel yizar i betrumas hakochin lo sochel for the negative of that. And if, if so, so then I don't have a source for the woman herself becoming psula uh, as a result of uh, intimacy with someone unfit the Gemara answers love as far as you're concerned for a negative command uh, by the way just to mention parenthetically that the the last question was such well that that's, that's fine as far as an assay is concerned but what about the love very often when we see mitzvahs that are stated only in the positive uh, we know that if it is violated so there is no punishment for it uh, no let's say uh, court ordained punishment so very often the Gemara will be looking for is there a negative as well with the appearance of a negative that will enable the court to issue lashes hence the Gemara was interested in, in saying that the issue of a woman who is married to a non Kohen would get lashed if she, uh, even though she's a Bas Kohen, if she eats from Truma. The Gemara uh, answers anyway that as far as if you're looking for a lav, that is learned me the whole Zar Lo Yoichal Kodesh Nafka. So I would have a source. From this other pasuk, the Cholzar, leaving available my opening pasuk of pasuk Yud Beis Ubas Yishar, as a source for the woman herself becoming psula, the source we were looking for. The Gemara asks, though, Hahu mi boyale legufe. This pasuk that says the Cholzar lo yochal kodesh is not needed for some uh, 
uh, other halacha, meaning that a woman who's a Bas Kohen, who marries a czar, cannot eat from Truma, that's needed for itself, for a real czar, a straightforward non Kohen, is also in eating Truma. But as far as the Bas Kohen, who is herself not really a Zara, uh, I would need my opening Pasuk to tell me that when she's married to a non Kohen, she cannot eat from Truma. And if that be the case, I lose my source for the idea of the woman herself becoming Psula as a result of intimacy with someone forbidden. Umar says, no, I, I still can free up our original Pasuk. Trey Vichol Zar Ksiv. I have two, and Rashi mentions the uh, the, uh, the the two psukim that we that the Gemara just mentioned. Uh, one is uh, Pasuk Yud, and you have in uh, another Pasuk that Rashi mentions. Anyway, we have uh, we have sources for the Truma eating prohibition. The Gemara asks, "Va'akati, but still mi boyale l'chir Rabbi Yosi bar Chanina." The Yom Rabbi Yosi bar Chanina, the Chol Zar, Zorus Amarti Loch Veloi Aninus. I I actually am using up my the Chol Zar psukim. Uh, for I have I need one for Rabbi Yosi's teaching. And if that be the case, so then my original pasuk is not available for teaching me about the bas that the uh, the the uh, woman becomes rendered possible by intimacy with someone who is unfit. Now, what's Rabbi Yosef is teaching? That it says it states that uh, there is truma prohibition for someone who is a non kohen for a czar, but not for a kohen that happens to experience aninus. Aninus is a situation where a close relative died and it hasn't been buried yet during that time period before from between death and burial so there are areas that there is restriction not so in the case of eating of truma a czar cannot eat truma but an onain is allowed to eat truma the Gemara answers to Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina, that particular halacha of the inference czar no but an onain yes is min zar v'chol zar nafka the vav v'chol the vav is a basis for Rabbi, for darshaning Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina's halacha and hence it's accounted for and I don't need to resort to my original posuk for uh, truma restrictions but rather as we said it would be a source for a woman who had intimacy with a with a puzzle that she would become unfit question but I still need the original posuk for something else which says the source says when we speak about a woman going back to her father's house we speak about her going back to resume truma eating but she can no longer eat from sacrifices the portions that are given to Kehanim from sacrifices offered in the base I mean, just that she does not resume eating the uh, Rashi says, Vakati, we're looking at Rashi on the third narrow line, Vakati hai de baska in kisia, mi boyale, le likuchin gemurin. It's not for the bia, the intimacy of someone puzzle, but it's a reference to a woman who had a likuchin gemurin, a full fledged kosher marriage, lashminan kishi chazeris le beisavia, the misas habao, vizera ain law. She goes back as a result of her non kohen husband dying, and she leaves no children. She doesn't go back to eating from the portions of sacrifices, the chaza the uh, breast meat and the, the leg meat that is, uh, that is given to kahanim from shlomim sacrifices. In contrast to her other unmarried sisters, that uh, a Kohen and his entire family, including his daughters, do eat from those things, but not the daughter of a Kohen who had married a kosher marriage and her husband died. She does not go back to Chazavishok. So our question right now is 
I still need my opening pasuk of Ubas Kank, he said, Lishzor, for this particular halacha. The Omar of Chistom Ravina, Bar Rav Shilo, my craw. What is the pasuk for this? That when, we, when she goes back to her father's house, she does not resume because of eating. Our opening pasuk, which we learn from that, lo sochel b'murom min hakodashim. The pasuk has said trumas hakodashim. Trumas hakodashim means truma means something that is raised from kachim from sacrifices, that which is separated from sacrifices and given to kohanim. From that, she shall not eat. So I lose my source for the original issue that we were looking for, namely that a woman who becomes, uh, who has intimacy with someone who is unfit, which is puzzle, she becomes puzzle. The Gemara answers, Im Kain, Lichtoiv Kro, He Bekadoshim Lo Socheot. If the Pasik was simply trying to tell us that the woman who goes back, the Bas Kohen who goes back to her father's house doesn't eat from the sacrificial. Uh, Portions, it could have said he he bekadoshim lo sochel. My betrumas hakadoshim. There's an extra word here. Trumas hakadoshim. Shamis mino tarti. This enables us to learn both points. Number one, the issue of the chaz of shok that she does not continue resume eating, and also that bias posel posel that a intimacy with someone who is unfit. Two, uh, as we mentioned, the list of those that were unfit, if they have intimacy with her, they render her unfit as well. She won't be able to, a woman that had intimacy with one of them, will not be able to uh, eat truma or marry into the kahuna. The Gemara asks, Akati, uh, that is Ashkechon Kehenes, the Pasuk that we have been relying on speaks about Abbas Kohen. So that would tell us that, uh, that um, it would tell us that uh, uh, a daughter of a Kohen is rendered unfit. Levia the Yisraelis Minolon. From where do we know that a non Bas Kohen, called a regular kosher Jewish woman? that has relations, has intimacy with someone who is unfit, that it renders them unfit into marrying the kahuna. Where do we learn that from? The Gemara says, Kid Omar Rabbi Abba Omar Rav, as Rabbi Abba Omar Rav says, Bas Ubas, that you focus on the Vav of, the, of that word. Hachonami, here too you have Bas Ubas, the Vav of Ubas Kahen, Include serves to include the Levi of Israelis. The Gemara asks, Keman Kirby Akiva? The Dorish Vovin is this entire halacha then based only on the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, who pays attention to the Vovim, who sees the Vov as the basis of Drushes of learning new halachas? Is this then limited to a, a, a we'll call it a single opinion? The Gemara says, No, Afilu Temo Rabbonon. Even according to the Rabbonan, we will derive this particular halacha. Why? Kule ubas pro yisei rahu. The entire ubas, it's not just the vav, but the entire uh, word is extra. Rashi says, Kule ubas pro yisei rahu, the hog siv liel mine. Before it had spoken about a kain kiikne nefesh v'chole v'yilid beso, the pasuk already referred to those that are born from the household of a kain. Umotzi lemichtav abasrei. It would have been sufficient to write v'chisia leizar when she, meaning the girl from the house of a kain, marries a, a, an izar. Therefore, the whole word ubas didn't need to be written, and it was. So this enables even the rabbonon to darshan. That the halacha of bias posel posel is not limited to benois kain to the daughters of Canaan, but includes levi of Yisraelis as well. Ashkechon Latruma. So technically speaking, even though in our commentary before we were in, we were imprecise, here the Gemara says that so far this posuk 
is talking about eating. So that refers to truma. It doesn't refer, as we mistakenly said before, the kahuna. The Pasuk refers to truma, le kahuna menolan. From where do we know that a woman that had intimacy with someone who was unfit renders her unfit to marry into the kahuna? So the Gemara answers, uh, it was, this point was alluded to earlier. Now, this particular section of Gemara has its own marking. You see on the side, the Mivneh, there's a triangle that appears in alternating directions. It's a Ma'akav, an attempt to keep track of the back and forth style. With the point facing up, that will be a response. The inverted triangle will be a rejection. So, in responding to this question of Kahuna Menolon, the Gemara answers... Before, did we not mention that we're including Levi of Israelis? Otto Levi of Israelis. Lola Kahuna Marbinon Lehu. Were we, when we made reference before, uh, in the, we said Ubas Kain comes to include the Levi of Israelis. Regarding what? Levi of Israelis don't eat from Truma, they don't come from households uh, where Truma was eaten. So when we were including them, were we not, in fact, including them that they are, when they become puzzle, they become puzzle in terms of marrying into the kahuna. So, <clears throat> that was already sourced. So, let's read this in the Gemara. Atu levi of Yisraelis lo lakuna marbina lahu. When we spoke about including the levi of Yisraelis before, were, uh, and that's where we have the arrow on the side in order to see, to, to point out where that was uh, mentioned, just a few lines up. We were including them with regard to marrying into the Kuna. Dila Truma, because if you were to think that our inclusion of Levi of Israel was for Truma eating, Benos, Mechal, Truma, Ninu, were they able, are they able to eat Truma in the first place? We wouldn't describe the Levi of the Israelites as becoming rendered unfit for truma eating when they were never fit for truma eating in the first place. The Gemara asks, Alom uh, how, how Why not? Why not say, in fact, that the reference before to the Levi of the Israelis was that the Bias Puzzle renders her unfit for truma consumption? And, and you'll say, well, she never ate from truma in the first place? That's not true. Mishkachas law you can have a situation where a, na, a woman, non kohen woman, a Levi of Israelis, let's say she married a Kohen, kosher marriage, married a Kohen, and she had a child from the Kohen, and the Kohen husband died, but she had a child from the Kohen. The Torah provides for this mother, who's a Levi of Israelis, to eat truma, because the Pesach speaks about Zerah Ein Law, where a, a woman where there, where there was no children but if there are children she's entitled to eat the truma as a result of having been married once to a Kohen and producing children from him so the teaching that we have above might very well be telling me that a woman like that if she has intimacy with an unfit individual with a puzzle she loses her truma rights so we don't see any source regarding the woman herself becoming puzzle with regard to marrying into the kahuna. The Gemara response, Bishvil bina, as far as the issue of uh, being affected by bias puzzle and eating of truma because she happened to have a child from a kayin, that is learned from another place. I don't need ubas for that. The above limud of ubas, in fact, is what we are looking for. And as far as the eating of truma because of child, that can be derived through kavachomer. Uma kohenes de pekedusha de nafsha ochla posila. Mind you, a kohenes who has inherent kohen kahuna sanctity. She eats because of her inherent sanctity. The intimacy with someone that's unfit ruins her, disqualifies her. Lavia Vi Israelis the law, the law, Achla Elabishvil bin Allah, Kalshikain. 
a Levi of Israel has, has less of a truma connection. Her only connection is because she had a child from a Kayin. She doesn't have this Kedusha de Nafsha. She doesn't have this inherent sanctity. Certainly then, the Bias Posel will, un, will render her unfit for truma eating. So if, if this be true then, if I could rely on this Kalvachomer, so then the Ubas uh, Limud up from above can be the source for Bias Pasel Pasel's Le Kahuna. Pasel's renders her unfit to marry into a, in, to marry a Kohen. The Gemara says, no, 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 you can't rely on this Kalvachomer. Vehi Hanosenis, this very source or, or point that you're relying on begs the issue. The Hanosenis is an expression meaning it begs the issue. Kahenes de Kaddish Gufa Pasilop. It's, it's actually because she has inherent sanctity that the uh, the bias puzzle will puzzle her. In other words, uh, we can say she's more sensitive. She's more. She's holier. The holier one is the more l- liable to ruination, to disqualification. They are. So because she has kedushas aguf, she becomes the the bas Cohen becomes unfit. For uh, truma eating because of the bias puzzle. Ha the lo kaddish gufa lo pasula. But if I were, I wouldn't know on my own through kavachomer regarding a levi of yisaelis. Therefore, uh, the pasuk is needed. Ubas coin would be needed to puzzle the levi yisraelis from truma. So I don't have a source then for uh, inherent for for uh, for um, kahuna where we had dashed underlined above. Uh, by the Roman numeral number two. I don't have a source for that anymore. So here the Gemara introduces, this is the second approach. We were relying before on the uh, attempt to learn from Ubas. So here we come with a new, a new approach. Ela Likahuna Kavachomer Migrusha. The idea that a Bias puzzle will puzzle a Bas Kohen from marrying into the kuna can be learned through Kavachomer logic from Grusha, from a divorcee. Uma Grusha, Shimuteris Petruma Asur Lakuna, a woman who is divorced from a kosher marriage. She's divorced. She goes back, if she's a Bas Kohen, she goes back to her father's house, and that's when she's Muteris Petruma. Or, in general, Let's say that again: that a bas kohen who is divorced, she is muteris petruma. But once she's divorced, she cannot marry a kohen anymore. Zu she asura petruma, the woman who was nivala lepasul, someone who had intimacy with someone that's unfit. Eno din. It's obvious. It's all the more so shepsula lekohuna. The Gemara asks. Can you use Kalvachomer logic to derive that to derive a prohibition? The expression Minhadin means Kalvachomer logic. Mazhirin is an expression that means a a uh, negative command. Can I derive a prohibition through Kalvachomer logic? Be, uh, as, as far as rules of Talmudic learning are concerned, ain, we say ain mazhirin minadin. We don't derive new prohibitions from kavachomer logic. The Gemara says here it's really not kavachomer logic; it's gilui milsa bi'almahu. The Rashi uh, explains. Kilui milsa biamahu, velav melach mine alfinon, lav lekuno mitrumo. It's not as if we're deriving a negative command regarding marrying the kuna from the eating of truma. Rather, de memela. It's it's simply a logical byproduct. Kavon de ifsala lechuma. Since she has become rendered unfit for truma, ifsala. Likuhuna. <coughs> Part and parcel makes her unfit to the kuna. The truma hainu kedushas kuna. The, the inability to consume truma is simply a reflection of kuna sanctity. So someone who is rendered unfit for the eating of truma 
it follows from that they can that they cannot marry into the kahuna. We have a bracketed section, and there's an explanation on the, on the side where there's a star. Achrei shagemora motzakan moker lebias posel posel bas kohen mi kahuna. Uh, now that the Gemara has found a source for a uh, intimacy with someone unfit renders the daughter of a Kohen unfit to marry into the Kuna after the bracketed section from where do I know that the intimacy uh, with a posel would render a Levia and Yisraelis as well unfit to marry into the Kuna. So up till this point, the war is focusing on a Bas Kohen. And that certainly was the case with regard to the Kavachomer that we just saw. Kavachomer, which the war really describes as Gilui Milsa Biyama, a simple a, establ- a revelation of information as opposed to uh, Kavachomer. Nevertheless, it's derived from this point, someone who was is mutter in Truma, becomes also in the Kuna, who are we describing there? We're describing a Bas Kohen. So the Bas Kohen, when she has uh, when she becomes unfit to Truma, as a result of intimacy with someone who is Puzzle, so certainly she becomes unfit to the Kuna. And now just to review the obvious, the uh, the issue of her, her uh, becoming unfit to Truma as a result of a Bias Puzzle, this we derived earlier from the Ubas uh, extra word. Okay, so now having mentioned the superstructure of the Gemara, within the brackets, our comment on the side reads, Who is considered puzzle to render or to disqualify a woman as a result of their intimacy? So just again, take an, a bird's eye view of the Gemara. If you skip to the the uh, third line from the top on Samach Tesom and Aleph, you will notice the Gemara says, Ashkechon Kohenes. We found a source regarding a Kohenes, a Bas Kohen, the V of Israel's Menolan. From where do we know that the intimacy uh, with someone who is Puzzle will render a Levi of Israel unfit to marry the into the Kahuna? That having been said, we can now go into the bracketed section, the Amor. Why not say Nivala Lapasala equals Chaive Krisus? We had seen a list of people that were considered unfit, and we saw this in a Tanaic source. Uh, it mentioned a, uh, a person who reaches nine years in a day, and he's, that means he's capable of intimacy. If he's a Ger, Amoni, or Moavi, Mitzriah, Domi, Kusi, this all we saw this on Sama, Chesom, and Aleph. And if they have intimacy with the Kehenis, Levi, Israelis, we said they render her unfit. And we, in, our, in, in the course of our discussion, we saw unfit for eating Truma if she's a Bas Kohen. Well, all of those people that were in the list, though they're forbidden, uh, that they, they, if one does have intimacy with them, it does not result in the serious kores punishment. It's a negative. There's a negative command in most of the cases. In the case of uh, mitzri adomi, it's an it's issue of violating a positive command, but it's not any more serious than a than something that would res- deserve lashing. The Gemara here is suggesting maybe Nivala Lapasala really is Chaive Krisus. People with whom intimacy would result in a Kores punishment. So that would mean that a brother and sister, uh, let's say the daughter of a coin, has intimacy with her own brother. Now that's Chaive Kores. Maybe that's the kind of intimacy that would render her or disqualify her. And one says, no, that can't be the explanation of the Pusuk, because in the Pusuk we saw Ki Siyeh Omar Rachmona. Ki Siyeh 
the word that verb form kisa when she will be the verb form of kitia indicates uh, bonding the the uh, fusing together of a relationship which is not the case when you have chiuve krisus that means a brother cannot marry the sister if a, a brother offers uh, money in exchange for his sister's approval of marriage nothing takes hold they wouldn't need a get let's say a divorce document to break them up let's read this in the Gemara those kind of people the, those kind of forbidden people that the marriage bond can be established when we say can be means it if done it takes hold doesn't mean that we that it's allowed havaya but with your when you're dealing with intimacy with someone that would result in a kores punishment the marriage bond doesn't even take hold therefore the posuk cannot be talking about chive kores but rather isure lav people that are forbidden only to the tune of a negative command the Gemara asks, well, I hachi, oive kechavim, vi eved, lo lifsalu. Intimacy with a with an idol worshipper, with a Gentile, or with a slave, should not render a woman unfit. Why? Because by them, there's no havaya. If a uh, Contrary to maybe what a very common notion amongst uh, people today as we're making this recording, intermarriage, uh, from a Jewish perspective, is a non-marriage. Uh, There's no bonding that takes place. In other words, a, uh, if, a, 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 there, if a couple that are intermarried, one is Jewish and one is not Jewish, you don't need a, a halachic get, a, get a, a divorce document uh, that's, uh, that, that the halacha uh, requires in general for couples to break up. One just, they just walk away from one another. And here we're not dealing in the course of our shir with, with uh, uh, secular government requirements. It's not part of the Torah. But when you're dealing with, from the Torah perspective... Uh, an intermarried couple that's an oivid kichovim or an eved an eved is a slave that kind of marriage <coughs> between uh, full-fledged Jew and a, and a Gentile or a slave since there's no havaya according to the rules that we're saying now they should not uh, render a woman unfit and yet we know that they are the woman is rendered unfit in other words a uh, if you just imagine for for a moment a uh, a, a Jewish girl on a on a uh, uh, college campus that uh, happens to uh, be uh, free with her body and has intimacy with a Gentile uh, might be a very nice fellow and all, but still intimacy is is strictly forbidden, Jew and Gentile, and she does ha- do that. That girl cannot. Uh, becomes rendered uh, unfit, is disqualified from uh, the matters regarding to kahuna, to priesthood. And a person who knows that he is a kohen, he has to be very careful when it comes to uh, choosing a mate. A girl that had intimacy with a Gentile is not fit to marry a kohen. So, but the Gemara is asking, but the, that kind of of uh, those individuals don't create a marriage bond to begin with, so maybe they shouldn't render her unfit according to the rules that we are saying now. So Mora says answers Hanoch Pasli Midurabi Shmuel that an Oivit Kichavim and Eved render a woman unfit to Kohen related matters that is learned from another source from Rabbi Shmuel. The Yom Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Shmuel, Minayin Loivet Kichovim Ve'Eved Shebo Al Bas Yisrael V'Al Kohenes Ulavia Sheposlua. From where do we know that a non-Jew, 
whether it be a Gentile or a slave, that had bought al basr means has intimacy. They have a, a one night fling. They do something in in a, in a back room in a party, and you can imagine any one of those scenarios that. Uh, 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 in all due respect one thing one has to be very clear on is that that girl is no longer allowed to the kahuna from where do we know that and by the way this doesn't mean this you can see from the Gemara it's not referring only to a girl that's a bas coin all Jewish girls uh, uh, are, are subject to this restriction Shenemar ubas kayen kisia almona ugrusha. The pasuk goes on to say we have on the side the continuation of the pasuk vizera ein la vishavel beisavia kinura milechem avia tochel vechol zar lo yochal boy. And we learn from this: mi sheyesh lo almonas vegerushin ba. What kind of girl goes back? to uh, eating chuma. It's a kind of girl that had been with a man through whom we would establish her as either an almona or a grush almona means she'd be considered a widow if he dies or she'd be considered a divorcee if he divorces her. Well, those are all kinds of people that the marital bond takes hold. However, the concept of a of a get of a Gentile man giving a get that's not that's not one of the mitzvahs that Gentiles have. Yotsu oivet kichavim ve'eved to the exclusion of an oivet kichavim ve'eved she'ain lo almonus ve'gerushin. These concepts don't apply to a an intermarried couple. So that the pasuk says. What kind of girl goes back to eating truma? The kind of girl that was with a man that could create a, the almona or gerushin status. A man who doesn't create an almona, an almona or grusha status. So she would be disqualified from kahuna matters. The Gemara continues as we indicated earlier. Ashkechon Kehenes and Rashi's kind enough at the very top to help us continue. He says Ashkechon Kehenes the Posil Law Eved. We can we see from here that the uh, the Bias Posil would Posil a Kehenes. The Via of Yisraelis Minolon. We we should point out that. The pasuk that was cited that we just had in the brackets spoke about the bas kohen. So, what about a levi of Israelis? The uh, more answers. Kid Omar Rabbi Abba Marav bas ubas. We saw that Rabbi Abba darshaned the word ubas earlier. So here in this posuk as well, we have that word, ubas. The thinking right now is, it's the drosh is focusing on the vov. The Gemara therefore asks, as we asked earlier, keman, kerebi, akiva, the dorish vovi, is this halacha then bound or, or established only by Rabbi Akiva, but the Rabbonon would not agree? The Gemara says, not so. Afilu temo Rabbonon, even the Rabbonon would agree, kula, ubas, Pro Yaserahu. The whole word Ubas is uh, uh, extra. It didn't need to be written. Uh, the Rashi points out why that is the case. Because right before this Pasuk, this by the way was Pasuk Yud Gimel. We saw in Pasuk Yud Beis, it was just before it, the, the Pasuk spoken about a Ubas Kayhain. So that we know who we're talking about when you get the Pasuk Yud Gimel. Every now and then in uh, our Gemara markings recordings, uh, I discover in the course of the actual Shi'ur uh, a point that needs to be uh, clarified or in this case corrected. Uh, it's a, a structural note that we made earlier, I believe at this point uh, needs to be undone. Uh, earlier we had mentioned the bracketed section that started from several lines up from the bottom of uh, Omid Beis, of Chesam Ches Omid Beis 
ending at the second line from the top here, but I think in retrospect, because of Rashi's one word that he adds at the top, Rashi Ashkan Kehenes, the Posil Lo Eved, the, that shows me that really the Gemara was continuing its simple back and forth discussion uh, uh, where we had, uh, af- after the Gemara had said on Sama Chesom at Beis, Gilu Milsa Alma, the Gemara then had suggested that maybe Nivala Apostle means Chaybe Krisus. The Gemara says, well, the Pasuk says Kisiya, indicating that those that Pasul are only Bene Havaya, as opposed to Chaybe Krisus, which are not Bene Havaya. Then the Gemara asks, and all of this we learned, and we learned it basically correctly, but it, the Gemara continued without any need for skipping sections. The Gemara then said, well, what about Oive Kichavim and Eved? Those are not Bene Havaya. So the Gemara answers, as far as the, the, that Oive Kichavim and Eved render a woman unfit, that is learned from Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel cited the Pasuk, it was Pasuk Yud Gimel, Ubas Kain Kisial Mono Grusha. A, uh, a man th- f- through whom a woman's status of almona grusha could be established to the exclusion of an oived kechavim or eved that don't create that status of almona or gerushin. Uh, we don't. We certainly know that we know that uh, an eved or an, a goy a gentile does not give a get. So they are not. They are not associated with almona or gerushin. However. The Gemara then asked three lines from the top of Samach Tesom and Aleph. Well, that's fine and good as far as a Kehenes, that is Nifsala through the intimacy with an Eved or an Ovid Kehoven, because the Posuk that was cited was Ubas Kehen. What about a Levi Yisraelis, Minolon, that, that they become a Posel uh, uh, through an uh, Eved and Ovid Kehoven? So the Gemara answered based on Rabbi Abba's drosha of Posuk Yud Beis, where the word Ubas was darshan. So uh, in Posuk Yud Gimel, which is the source for the psul of Eved Ovei the Ubas word appears. So I hope that this clarifies the um, the imprecision that we had before. I hope that's okay. So my apologies for this digression, but nevertheless we pick up the Gemara. Here on Samach Tes Omer Aleph, uh, seven lines from the top, the Gemara asks, the Amo, an alternative suggestion, Mishi Yeshlo Almonis Vigerushin Ba, regarding people like that, so people who do establish the Almona status through their death or Gerushin through their divorcing her, Kiles Le Zera Kochlo, when she has no children from, through him, so then she goes back to her father's house and eats, resumes the eating of truma. Ki is le zera when there are children from them lo ochla. So then she wouldn't continue resume eating. However, Misha Ain Lo Almonus Vagerishin Ba, someone like an Evid or Vikhovim that doesn't establish Almonus or Gerishin, Afagav the is le zera nami techol maybe the standard that applies to them is that even if they do uh, have seed meaning children are produced she is able to eat and the uh, idea being as Rashi says because they in terms of laws of intimacy are concerned are considered kibahema bialma the Gemara says response im kain if that were the case, Ribui Levio Visraelis Lomali. We before mentioned Ubas comes to include Levio Visraelis. If the point of the whole Pasuk was to tell me this, that if she, uh, the distinction between uh, those that have Almonus and Gerishin. Uh, if there is a seed, she does, uh, she, she does not resume eating truma. But these people that don't have Amunus and Gerishin, even if there is seed, she's able to resume eating truma. What does that have to do with Levia and Yisraelis? They don't have any connection to the to resumption of eating of truma. And yet we had the Reboi uh, learn from Ubas. What was that for? 
So, therefore, we can't accept this particular alternative suggestion. Rashi elaborates. We look at Rashi four lines from the top. Im Kain, the high craw. Lakula Ksiv, if it were so that this Posik is actually teaching me the the, uh, the aforementioned leniency, Ulashmina de Zera Devikovid Loposil that that children born from a an intermarriage intermarried unit would not render her unfit to resume Truma eating. Ribui Leviv Sherlis de Siv Bay, the Ubas word that came to include Levi Sherlis, what's it there for? Lomali the the Kosab Ubas Kroyusera. Hashta Kehenes Gufashminan the Lomifsula Bazaro Vikham Vevid. Now that according to our suggestion that that children born after a union with a with a with a gentile or a slave does not render the Bas Kohen herself from being unfit, Levi Yisraelis Mibaya, it would be obvious that Levi Yisraelis certainly would not be rendered unfit. So with that in mind, as we see that this alternative approach uh, cannot be accepted. The Gemara asks, Ulo Rebi Akiva, and here we have a topic heading, the No Say, where we've written on the side, Me Achar Du Rebi Kiva, Lo Boy HaPosuk Ubas Koyen Kisi Almona Grusha, Rabbi Kiva doesn't need the Posik of Ubas Kohen to learn from it the uh, psul, the disqualification as a result of Eved and, and, and Gentile. So what does he do with this Posik? So now we read. Ula Rabbi Akiva de Omar, Ein Kedushin Toysin Bechayve Lavin that there is no bonding when you're dealing with uh, violations of even a mere negative command nature. Umay ki zar What does the posa ki zar mean for Rebbe Akiva? Ki tiboyel When there is intimacy. It doesn't mean when there is marriage. It means when there is intimacy. And that would include all those that are not qualified for marriage. All those that are prohibited, including Eved and Akum, including slave and Gentile. According to Rabbi Kiva, therefore, Almona Ugrusha Lomali. What is the role of Almona and Grusha in the Pasuk for Rabbi Akiva? Before we saw the words Kisia uh, Almona Ugrusha for the exclusion of uh, Eved and Oyved Kechavim, that they would not enable her to go back to eating Truma. But as far as uh, Rebbe Akiva is concerned, all of that one could have derived from Posuk, the earlier Posuk. Uh, uh, so what does Rabbi Akiva learn from the presence of Almona and Gerusha uh, in, in, in this Pasuk Yud Gimel and uh, if we look at Rashi Ula Rabbi Akiva the Yomar Ein Kedush and Toysim Le'odom Pasol V'hai Kisiyah Le'izhar D'li'el Lav Mishum Havaya Nokit uh, it wasn't there for telling me about where marriage can take hold or not. And to tell me that Bias Posel will render unfit only someone who's not fit to marry. As far as Rabbi Akiva is concerned, there's no marital bond with anyone who's unfit. As we said before, it's inclusive of all those that are unfit for marriage, including the Oyved Kechavim and Eved. So the, ex, the disqualification created by Oyved Kechavim and Eved could have been derived from the previous Pasuk. Almono, Rashi continues, Almono Grusha Lashmin and Oyved Kechavim Eved Lomali. What does 
what is the role of Almona and Grusha doing here to shed light on Eve Tichavim and Eved, according to Rabbi Akiva? So now we go back to the Gemara. Almona lahachmir oleha, Grusha lahakil oleha. In fact, the words Almona and Grusha are not coming to exclude. Uh, those that have Almonas and Grushin, but rather they are needed to teach me about these very uh, entities themselves, an Almona and a Grusha. As the Gemara explains, this is a long answer. Almona lahachmir olah, Grusha lahakil olah. With regard to the Almona, you'll see a point of stringency, and with regard to the Grusha, a point of leniency. Utsricha. The Iashmin and Almona. If the Posik would have told me about an Almona, so an almona is a widow. I would have said as follows: Almona who the chiles lo zera ochlo. That, as the pasuk says, that when there is no children, when a woman had been married, a, a bas kohen had been married to a non kohen, and there were no children, she goes back. She resumes eating truma from her father's house. So we say when she has no children, she eats mishum dechazi lekuna. Now Almona is a widow; she is fit to marry other standard kehanim. Avo grusha the lo chazi lekuna, a woman who was divorced, she's not fit to the kuna. Ema, I would have thought afagav the less lozera, even though no children were produced, lo achla she doesn't resume truma eating. After you're dealing with the one that can't marry into the kuna as a, as a result of her being a divorcee. So therefore, stating Almona would have led me to a wrong conclusion regarding a Grusha. The Ashmin and Grusha, and had the Torah stated that a Grusha divorcee goes back to eating Truma, Grusha who, the Chiis lo Zera lo Ochla, there, by the case of the Grusha, I would have thought that when there are children, so she does not eat. Mishum de lo Chazi Likuna, because she's not fit to the Kahuna. Avo almona the chazi lekuna, but with regard to an almona that's fit to the kahuna, Amo, I would have thought afagav the isla zeranami techol. Even if she had children from her deceased husband who was a non kohen, even though there are children, she would eat, which we know is not the case. Tzricha, therefore, it's necessary to spell out the halachas of almona and grusha, telling me that in both cases. When there are no children, she goes back to her father's house to eat. When there are children, she does not go back to her father's house to eat. In, in truth, we are uh, in the middle of a sukya about determining who is a posulon, who is not. Um, we have a new marking, which is indicated on the side, under the Mivneh heading, the trapezoid or volcano shape, Halos Hatsos Vitachyosam. We're going to be raising uh, uh, suggestions and the Gemara will reject them. So the Gemara suggests, Fiema Nivalo Laposola, when we speak about a woman having intimacy with someone who is unfit, that that should include Af Machsir Grushoso, a man who, after divorcing his wife, takes her back but in the interim after the initial divorce she went and married another man the Torah says that in such cases a man is not to take uh, back his original wife that he divorced it's a very nice thing for people to remarry or marry again the woman they divorced but that's provided that in the interim they didn't go and marry someone else so that's called Mahsir Grushoso, but the fuller expression is Mahsir Grushoso Mishanises. That's a forbidden relation. Shall we say that a woman like that, let us say she's the daughter of a Kayin, because uh, 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 in, a, in the case of a daughter of a Kayin, she, as a, uh, an unmarried woman, she would be able to eat from her father's truma. If she were, let us say, married to a man who divorced her and then remarried her, when in the interim she married someone else, 
maybe that should be considered uh, something that renders her unfit, disqualifies her from truma. So the Gemara answers. The Pasuk used the expression Laish Zar, Omar Rahmana. Misha Zar et Slaw Meikara. It's a type of man that was at the very outset unfit for her. La Fuke Hai, to the exclusion of this man, the low Zar et Slaw Meikara, who he wasn't originally unfit. It's true in the interim she became he became unfit to her because she had married someone else. But that's not what the Pusik was referring to. Question Ihachi Cholo the Lav Zar Hu Lo Lifsal. And this is a very interesting line because we have to add explanation. When the when uh, we a Cholo is a is a man whose father was a Kohen and he, but his father did something wrong. He married a divorcee. The the resultant son is a non Kohen, halachically speaking, even though his father's a Kohen. A man like that, let's say a Bas Kohen, a, a girl whose father is a Kohen, and she's a regular kosher from a kosher marriage, she's allowed, the Torah does not have any uh, prohibition upon her from marrying a holo. If you switch things around, namely a a girl whose father was a Kohen and married a divorcee, she's a halola. She cannot marry uh, that a Kohen is not allowed to marry her. But a Kohenis, she is allowed to marry a halol. So when the when the halolos is in the ma- on the masculine side of the equation, so the wife can be a kohenis. But when the woman is the halola, so the man who's a kohen, he's forbidden. So here we're suggesting that a halol who is not a czar to her in the sense that a kohenis, a bas kohen, is allowed to marry a halol. But we happen to know that a Bas Kohen who marries a Cholo, she is rendered unfit with uh, upon intimacy with a Cholo, she's rendered unfit to eating truma. But if the if the approach that we're that we just cited that Leish Zar means when is a woman rendered unfit when it's a man that originally was forbidden to her is a Cholo originally forbidden to her? To a Bas Kohen? No. So would, does, does that mean then that a Bas Kohen that has intimacy with a Cholo can, go, can resume eating truma from her father's house? Well, that we know is not true either. So what do we do with the rules? So let's read this in the Gemara again. E uh, uh, if, if it's so, that only someone who's Zar Meikora renders her unfit, Cholo de Lav Zarhu Lo Lifsol. A Cholo who is not considered Zarhu to her shouldn't render her unfit, and yet we know that he does. Omar Kro, Lo Yechalel Zaroi Be'amov. That's a posuk. Makish Zaroi Loi. We compare his seed to him. Mahu Posel. Just like a Kohen Godol renders an almona unfit through his intimacy. So just like he renders the woman unfit, af zaroi, so to his seed, meaning a Kohen Godol that has relations with an almona and produces a child. The child is called a cholo. Similar to the case we mentioned before of a Kohen Hedyot that marries a Grusha. The child is a cholo. So just like he renders the woman unfit, af zaro nami posel, so to his seed, his children, who are chalolim, they also render women that they have intimacy with unfit for truma. Question, the mishas havaya, should we say 
And that even from the point of time that the apostle is Makadesh, the woman, up till now we've spoken about intimacy. Maybe the, the, the point of prohibition or disqualification is from the point that the, this, the un, unfit man offers the Bas Kohen money to marry her. That's Shas Havaya. The, the, literally the, from the point to be to be we mentioned before indicates the marriage bond is established and that is from the point that he is Mekadesher the Gemara says no we're not going to say that the halachas of disqualification are paralleled to that which we learn from the case of the Kain uh, Godol and the and his relations with an almona. Ma kain gadol almona just like in the case of the kain gadol, uh, renders her unfit from truma only as a result of intimacy. Af hai nami babia. So to the cholol as well will render uh, the woman unfit uh, with through intimacy, not through the uh, offering of kiddushin. Question: Viemo adiko havaya ubia. Maybe psul results. Maybe he doesn't passel uh, the the un, the uh, unfit one. Unfit man doesn't render the woman unfit until you have both marriage. That means the money is given to her and intimacy. The Gemara answers as we just did. Dumia de kengolobamona. The halochas of ruination are learned from the standard applied to a high priest with the widow. Ma kengolobamona babia de chuda. Just like in the case of the almona with the kengolob, it's through intimacy alone. Af hai nami babia de chuda. So too here it is through intimacy alone. No need to also reco- uh, 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 have the presence of kiddushin of money being offered to her beforehand. The continuation of the Gemara will deal with the other Shitos Tanoim that we saw on Daf Sama Chesom and Aleph. So Mirza Shem in our next year will pick up from this point.